get you some. Oh, yeah. Mate, it's lucky she can cook. Well, hello, hello. Welcome back, lovelies. All right, are you ready for this one? Ned Kelly pie. Okay, first of all, we're going to do the filling. So I will write the recipe below as always. We need one kilo of beef mince, two medium brown onions, corn flour, Worcestershire sauce, chicken stock, tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, and Vegemite. Now, if you are somewhere in the world where you can't get Vegemite, you can absolutely do it without it and it will still taste really yummy. First thing you want to do is the onions. Oh, mate, are they strong? I can't see a bloody thing. Okay, so you peel your onions and we want to chop them up really small. Now, I'm doing this as a really easy version tonight, so absolutely anybody can make this. All right, the next thing we need to do is get out a big frying pan. All right, medium heat, a little bit of olive oil or any oil you've got, onions in. Okay, now we want to cook them out for a couple of minutes until they're see-through. A couple minutes later, now we add our mince. Now we don't want to cook our mince and make it dry, we just want to brown it, which means just keep playing with it like this for a couple of minutes. Okay, a couple of minutes later we want to put one and a half tablespoons of corn flour in there. Now, it, you can't taste it, it's to make the sauces go thick and you've just got to trust the process. I promise you, you cannot taste it. Alright, mix that through really well. Now we add one and three quarter cups of chicken stock. Three quarters of a cup of tomato sauce. Three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One and a half tablespoons of barbecue sauce. And one heaped teaspoon of Vegemite. Now we want to mix it in really well. Turn it down to a simmer once we've mixed it all in really well. And once we've got it simmering, we just simmer it away until it's nice and thick and beautiful. So it's taken 25 minutes in my electric frying pan. But if you're doing it on the stovetop, it'll probably take you 15 to 20 minutes. Now when you get it, that you can smooth it out and go like that. And you can see it just starting to close in real slowly. See how it pretty much stays in now? That's when you know it's ready, okay? So if you go like that and all the juice comes flooding in there, it's not ready yet. As soon as you can make a pattern and it stays like it, beautiful. Okay, so next thing we do, oh my god, it smells amazing, is we turn it off. And now we need to leave it sit there until it goes completely cold. Wow, that's cooling down. I've got six bacon tops there. I'm going to chop them up and chuck them in a bowl. Okie dokie. The next thing we're going to need is a pie dish. Now, I've just bought this one, so it's the first time I've used it. It's a 24 centimeter deep dish. I bought it from Big W for $14. So I would normally use frozen puff or short crust, just whatever I've got at the time. But I happen to have some short crust here at the minute. So I'm gonna get out two sheets of short crust pastry and thaw them out for the bottom. And then after, I'm gonna use puff pastry for the top. Once our pastry is thawed out, we now want to preheat our ovens at 180 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to cut one of these in three strips, hoping that this is going to fit. I haven't used this one before, so we'll see how we go. Okay, first one in. Push it down in to make sure there's no air holes in the bottom. Just lift and push. So I'm just going to bring it up to just before where the last one ends, push it in hard and join it to it. Once I've joined it to it, I'm just gonna bend it over. We can now take a knife and just gently go along the edge and just slide around the edge like that and cut it all off. Okay, once we've done that, there's a couple of little bits that are missing. So I'm just gonna get some and put it on there. Squash it on. Make sure it's sealed in, and then just slice around there. Now once we have our beautiful patchwork base, we now want to grab a couple of sheets of puff pastry out and get them ready and thawing. Now we put our meat filling in. Okay, and now we gently want to push it all down. Okay, once we've done that, just gently flatten it. Oh my god, don't start eating that filling or you won't be able to stop. Now with the back of the spoon, I'm going to make a few little indents. Okay, now I'm going to crack seven eggs into there. Now, if you're doing um, single ones, you just put one egg in the top of each one. 
Now a little bit of salt and pepper on top. Now we want to sprinkle our bacon all over it. All right, you probably could have got away with five rushes of bacon tops. Okay, now we're going to sprinkle grated cheese on it. So tonight I've got mozzarella, so that's what I'm using. But you can use any cheese you want. Okay, once you've done that, just go around and clean it all off of the edges. Now we just want to get a little bit of milk. Now you can use your fingers or a pastry brush, and we just want to get the milk around the edge. Lay our first sheet on top of puff pastry. So what I'm going to do now with the second piece is I'm just going to cut some little strips just to make it fit all the way around. So I'm just going to join them to those ones to make it come out to the edge and just gently push down. Okay, once I've done that, I'm just going to fold them all over. And get the knife again and go around and trim the whole thing. We can have absolute fun with it. So now if you want, you can get little strips of pastry and put them all over it. You can do absolutely whatever you want. So what I'm going to do first is either you get a fork and you press the fork in all the way around to join it together. But today I'm going to use a spoon and I'm just going to press it in like that and then press a couple more. And I'm just going to go around and do it like that today just to make it all pretty. So I figured since I've got those joins in it anyway, I'm just going to cut four little strips and I'm just going to put the strips over the joins and join them together like that. Press it on and just trim the edges off. Alright, once we've done that, I've got this little cookie cutter of Australia. <laughs> Normally, I only just found this not long ago, so I've been starting to do it on all the single pies. So it might be just a little bit small for the big one, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I've got enough pastry here, so I'm going to cut one of them out. Stick a little Australia in the middle. I'm going to make up a little Tassie. Can't forget Tassie. Stick me little Tassie on. Oh, how cute. Okay, now with our pastry brush or our fingers, we want to cover the whole top in milk. Okay, now we've got the milk on. I'll just turn it around to see if you can see the little Aussie in there. Oh, look. Oh, how cute. Okay, so now you want to get a fork. And it doesn't matter how many times or how you want to do it. You can just do a couple in the middle if you're just doing a plain one. All right, you just sort of push it in, the fork, and then kind of just move it a little bit to make it holes. And we have got our gorgeous Ned Kelly pie ready to go in. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it on a cookie tray. So if anything spills over, it won't go into the bottom of your oven and, you know, start your smoke alarms off. So onto a cookie tray and bang her in the oven. <laughs> One hour later in my electric oven. And we have got ourselves something else, mate. Oh, <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, six huge serves. If you want to serve it with mashed potato and peas, you'd probably serve 8 to 10 with it. Um, it's really great when it's cooled down. You can wrap it and put it in the fridge. It will last up to a couple of days. And you can just keep nuking or putting it in the oven and heating some up. So I'll leave it sit there for about 15 minutes now just to settle and do its thing. And I'll get the table ready. So the best thing about baking a pie is it gives you plenty of time to clean the kitchen up. So you can actually sit down and have a meal with your family. It's really lovely. I'm probably not going to be able to make it look pretty, but at least you can see. Well, there you have it, lovelies. Just like that, an incredible Aussie dish. <laughs> I think I was being generous with six. That's six huge serves. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Have yourselves an awesome night and give this one a go. Absolutely anybody can make it and it is so bloody good. Bye.